Oh, he is good, folks. Amen. Could we praise him one more time? Let's lift him up here this morning. Oh, God, I praise you. You have been so very good to me and my family and this church, Lord, and I love you, and I thank you for such a good group of people here. Lord, I appreciate your people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to read from Acts chapter 20. If you'd like to read there with me, Acts chapter 20. And uh, I'll mainly read there on verse 28 is where I want to really get into. But uh, maybe I'll start in verse uh, 22 uh, where Paul is speaking to the, the leaders of the church in Ephesus and uh, this is something wonderful that he says it says and, and now I go bound in the spirit into Jerusalem not knowing the things which shall befall me there save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching it, the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take, uh, take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. And this was his admonition to these leaders. It says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves. And to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. And I want to preach on God's prized possession. Amen. The church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Would you stretch your hand this way and ask God to help me preach this morning? Heavenly Father, Lord, you know how wonderful that I believe that the church is and how wonderful I know Jesus is. I'm praying that you would help me here this very day to lift up Jesus and to show this church how wonderful it is to be a part of God's people. If there are those that are not saved or for some reason do not know the greatness and the, well, the privilege of being a child of God. I pray that they would become a child of God this very morning. Lift up your holy name today, and I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I know you all have heard that prized possession, that men of all the things that you may own or like, that right there, that's something that's priceless to you. It may be because of something that someone gave to you, or it may have been something that you yourself had to spend a lot of money on, a lot of time on, it may have some sentimental value, or it may actually be worth something. But it's still someone's prized possession. But as I read this, and the Apostle Paul is giving admonition to these overseers, it's very obvious who he believes is the prized possession of God. It is the very church of the living God. And I'll tell you, if you're a part of the church of God, it is a wonderful privilege to know that you belong to God and that you are loved of God in such a special way. 
Now, Paul was given this admonition to these people, and this shows his, his uh, high esteem for the church. And you'll have to admit things changed in Paul's life because there was a time that he desired to exterminate the church. He wanted to put it completely out of existence. But praise God, when Jesus came into his life, not only did Paul's life change, but his attitude about the church changed as well. That's exactly what happens to all of us. There may have been a time that you can look back to and you say, well, church isn't that important. Well, it's not that important until you really, really, really get right with God. When you really get right with God and you become a part of the church, you realize how important it is to, to be a part of God's blood-bought body of believers. And so the Apostle Paul lifts up the importance of the church by showing these overseers the greatness of their job. They are to take care of the flock of God. You're God's flock, church. Amen. Now, uh, that's an important thing right there. <laughs> Amen. But it's also something that these leaders had needed to realize. They were not just taking care of some rich man's positions. They were not just uh, making provisions in their feeding of some... Uh, powerful person's possession, but it's the flock of God that they's taken care of. And they also recognized the person that appointed them to this job was not just any person of this earth. Some preachers, I think, or uh, daddy called and mama sent, somebody said, but a real preacher is sent there by the Holy Ghost. His authority comes from the power of the Holy Ghost. A politician that gets a church may still have to politic all the days of his existence there to keep the church. But the truth is, somebody the Holy Ghost gives authority to, hey man, I'm not telling you people don't reject a Holy Ghost sent preacher, but I will tell you that he doesn't have an authority that comes by shaking hands and kissing babies. Amen. And so here they had an authority that came from the third person of the triune God. But the prize possession was pointed out. He said, I want you to understand you have an important work. This is the flock of God. You have been appointed by an important person, the Holy Ghost. But I want you to recognize that God paid a high price for the church. It's his prized possession. Amen. And because of this, you better be careful how you treat the church. And so I'll just leave this to all of us. I think this admonition is for everybody that belongs to the church. This is God's prized possession. Hallelujah. We better be careful how we treat the church, amen? I mean, listen, I realize this building needs to be taken care of. We need to understand that this building needs to be treated with some respect. Brother Shaw and different ones worked on this building, put their blood, sweat, and tears into it, finances and money, and you don't just treat this building any old way. But at the same time, if a building is valuable and, uh, and, and we need to tr uh, treat it in a proper manner, how much more the church, which is not necessarily a building, but people, that Jesus paid the price with great price of his suffering and his blood, how much more valuable is that? And how much more valuable is it for us to interact and stay unified and treat one another in a high way? Because this is God's prized possession. Hallelujah. Now let's talk about the blood. Amen. Let's talk about the purity of the blood that, was, uh, 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 that he used to buy the church. Now the verse here that I've referred to, it says, feed the church of God which he, God, hath purchased with his, God's own blood. 
Now you realize that this is talking about pure blood. It's talking about God's blood. Now Adam's blood was tainted. It was full of contaminants in the blood that is passed down from Adam to this generation. There was the defilement of sin. There was the defilement of disease and sickness and even death. Death was in our Father's blood. But Jesus' blood was not Adam's blood. Right here it says that it was God's blood. We know that medical science has proven that the blood of an individual comes from their father. And this is a declaration that Jesus was and is the son of the living God. He was not just an ordinary person, friend. He was God manifested in the flesh. He had the same nature of his father. And the Bible says that he thought it not robbery to be equal with the Father. Jesus is like no other person. And he had blood flowing through his veins like no other person. I realize that if you're talking about lineage to a certain extent through Mary, you can go all the way back to, Mar uh, to Adam. But I also am going to declare to you, amen, that his blood did not go back to Adam. His blood was God's blood, pure blood, holy blood, sanctified blood. No taint of sin, sickness, nor disease was in that blood. And the Bible says in Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11, this, this was something that, a principle that was set up in the book of Leviticus. And I'm just going to tell you, I realize some people look at Leviticus as though that it was a, a very boring book. Some, in some ways, some of the regulations can, I can get lost in it. I'll have to admit, but you know, some of, some of the most, God is declared holy in the book of Leviticus and the way into his holy presence is showed in the book of Leviticus. This book right here lays down plainly why 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 it took blood for us to get in god's holy presence in leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11 it says this amen and aaron uh let's see i turned back to fur there it says for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. Yes, the life of the flesh was in the blood. And the life of an innocent animal that had never rebelled and never sinned was taken and shed day after day, year after year, as a symbol that that innocent victim could take the place of a guilty one. But there had to be gallons and gallons and rivers and streams and oceans of blood shed of bloods and bulls and goats to just kind of cover for the sins of Israel. But I want you to know, amen, that even though their blood was innocent, it was not holy. Even though they had not rebelled, amen, it was not the blood of God. Hallelujah. And so therefore it had to have a river of blood continually flowing from that altar. I'm going to tell you the power of the purity of the blood of Jesus Christ was the fact there's the blood of God, holy, amen, pure, eternal, the blood of the Creator. Amen. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And the life of a lamb had a starting point and an ending point. And I'm telling you, the life of God has no beginning and has no ending. What power is in the life of the blood of Jesus Christ? No wonder. Amen. The church is God's prized possession. Amen. He paid for it of his own blood. Hallelujah. Could you give God a praise for giving such a great price. Hallelujah, Lord. I praise you. I praise you, Lord. Oh, I thank you, dear God. Oh, I give you the glory and the praise and the honor 
and the thanks for it all, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's talk about the price of the blood and the price of the purchase of the blood. Many times we honor heroes that have given their life for people in harm's way. Rightly so. We need to do that because brave people need to be honored. Sacrificial people need to be honored. Many times in plaques and different things that go to honor them, there will be a verse written there. John 15 and 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that is applicable to every hero that's ever uh, died in the military or every police officer that died in harm's way or every mother or father that died to give their life for their children. All of these things are applicable. But I'll tell you, Jesus Christ goes above and beyond the call of duty. He gave his life in such a sacrificial way, not for his friends, but he called his enemies friends and died for them before they were his friends. Oh, what a great thing that is. I was touched when I read the story about a little boy whose sister was terribly, terribly sick and uh, they needed a blood transfusion to keep her alive. And so they did the test and his blood was a perfect match. And so they came to him and said, listen, said, uh, we need to take some of your blood and give it to your sister so she can live. And, and he thought about it and he said, I'll, I'll be glad to do it. He laid down there on the table. They, they stuck the needle in his arm and began to get some blood out of him and so on. He laid there with his eyes closed. And finally they said, okay, uh, buddy, the, uh, this is over. And he looked up and he said, have I not died yet? Do you know what that little boy was going to give his life? He thought he was giving his life for his little sister. Well, it touched me. I don't know if that touches you or not. But I just, I just want you to know that Jesus Christ gave his life's blood for all of us here. Praise his holy name. Amen. There was a preacher that was standing up preaching, in a, and a man came in the back door and sat on the back, and he began to tell a story. He said there were two boys that was great friends, and one had a dad that was really special. He was a great man, a saved man, a Christian man, and the boy was a Christian too. And this, this boy and him were great friends. It's obvious that he wanted to try to win the, the boy that was lost, his friend to the Lord. The father included him in some of the outings because, you know, the family was all mixed up and he didn't have much and, and uh, he was a little bit rough around the edges and, and had been in trouble here and there. And so they went out boating one day and got in a storm and the two boys fell overboard. The father had a great decision to make. Which boy will I save? The father looked down and saw both of them were flailing, just barely staying afloat. But one boy was saved and one boy was lost. If one boy died, he'd go to heaven. If one boy died, he'd go to hell. The choice was there. And the good man jumped in and saved, not his son who was saved, who was right with God, but saved the wild boy. And that preacher went on to say, the man that came in the back, that's the man. And I'm the boy he saved. And I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, 
that story right there is an amazing story. But oh, God gave his only begotten son the price, the price of this purchase is greater than what we can imagine. Amen. That was a great price. That little boy in his mind laying down there and saying, I'll give my life for my sister. That was a great price, even though he didn't have to go through with it. But God so loving this world that he gave his son for the church. That's a great price. No wonder we're the prized possession of God, my friend. Amen. Christ. Amen. Is the greatest hero of all. For though we honor the fallen heroes of war, and, and police and different things, firefighters. Uh, amen. Jesus Christ suffered physically, yes. Uh, amen. Just as horribly as anybody. Amen. When his blood was spilt uh, by the crown of thorns and the whipping and the tearing of the, of the whip upon his back uh, and the nails in his hands and feet. Uh, amen. When did they beat him and bruised him and spit upon him? All of that uh, was a physical suffering no doubt that his mental and emotional anguish was greater far still, amen, than what man can imagine. And then even further, amen, the suffering spiritually that Jesus went through because it was not just Roman soldiers that beat him, but the Bible says that we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. I just want you to know that Jesus did not just suffer uh, there upon the cross physically, emotionally, and mentally. He suffered spiritually the very wrath uh, of Almighty God. What a hero that would take that for all of us. Uh, amen. What a price to pay for all of us. I cannot even imagine how that even the father felt as his son suffered there upon the cross. Angels waited for just one word to come and tear this world apart, but the word did not come. Instead, it is finished, came from his mouth, and he died there upon the cross. Now listen, Jesus' words are great. His teachings are the best teachings that's ever been. I do not want to put down his words, but there are people nowadays that talk about his words, but do not look at him as a savior. He was a wise man. He was a good teacher. But I'm going to tell you, it was not his words that set us free from sin. It was his wounds that set us free from sin. His resurrection declared <laughs> that God was satisfied with the price. <laughs> and oh, my friend, what a great thing to have the idea that we are God's prized possession because of the price that was paid. Let's talk about the purchase. The church is God's prized possession. Creation did not cost him anything. He spoke and it became <laughs> nothing erupted in everything. It didn't cost him to make everything. All the gold mines and the petroleum and the sun that blazes, he, he spoke it all into existence. It all belongs to him. But I'll tell you what, the church cost him some. The church cost him a great deal. All these things around that people look at as valuable, God said, are you kidding? <laughs> I could create a million worlds just like this one. I could, make, I could make 20 times the size of earth in gold nuggets just like that. You talk about gold being valuable, that's nothing. But the church, oh, I had to pay something for the church. That's my prized possession. I had to give my only begotten son for the church. Now again, I believe we're under God's protection because we're his prized possession. Don't touch that right there. 
Hallelujah. And the blood can protect us from the powers of hell that comes in against us. Now listen, this, this may not be an exact story. I'm just talking about protection right now by the blood of Jesus. And I, I heard a story about Kit Carson, who was a Wild West hero years ago. And, and he, he, unlike uh, Brother Frank Rogers, if you heard his message last night, he liked mules for some reason. And they was going across that area with mules. And all of a sudden, he looked off in the distance and said, I see the Apaches coming. And he said to his men that was with him, he said, do what I say and do what I do and do not ask any questions. He took and slit the throats of his mule and those men followed likewise. They emptied the blood of those animals all there and got behind them as a barricade to fight. And when that the Apache Indians were coming, their horses would go back when they came to that blood. They, the stench of it just caused them to go back. And Kit Carson and his people were saved because of the blood. It created a barrier there. Now listen, that may be gross to everybody here, but I'm going to tell you there is a barrier between us and the powers of hell that would like to overrun us. We are under attack. The spirits of hell hate the church. You know why? Because you're God's prized possession. Amen. The devil would like to come and tear it apart and destroy it and do all manner of evil against it. But I just want should understand as long as we stay behind the bloodline God shed the blood of his only begotten son and it'll keep us safe from the powers of hell you might say brother Lloyd I'd like to get saved but I don't know if I can stay saved yes you can just stay behind the bloodline and it's a barrier against every force of hell that wants you to backslide your God prized possession and you're going to be protected by God because he paid a high price for your protection. Amen. He is going to provide for you. He's going to take care of you. Amen. And he has power to deliver you in every way. And so I just want you to know that the church is God's prized possession. Amen. Oh, thank God that we can belong to the church. How do we do that? Well, you do it by giving your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Could we all stand here this morning? Could we raise our hands and thank God for the blood of Jesus? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, dear God, for paying the great price for the church. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, I thank you that we can belong to the church through the blood of Jesus Christ. I praise you, Lord. I worship you, dear God. Oh, I magnify you. I give you the glory. I give you the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While heads are bowed for just a moment, I want to ask, are you here this morning and you say, Brother Lloyd, I'm not a part of the church. I come to church. Now, there's a difference. I want to make this plain. There's a difference between coming here and belonging to the church. You have to have an experience with God to belong to the church. We're glad to have you here, but we want you in heaven. We don't want you to go to hell. We want you to be saved. Now, this is the simple facts. God gave his son's life so that you could be protected, so you could be forgiven. His life was given for your life. The question is, have you turned from your sins to God and asked his forgiveness and trusted what Jesus did upon the cross? 
believe that he raised from the dead so that you could be saved. Have you done that? Are you living for God? If you died right now, would you go to heaven or hell? I'm throwing out the lifeline. I'm throwing out the lifeline. Somebody needs to be saved here this morning. If you haven't asked God's forgiveness, you hadn't trusted in what Jesus did upon the cross, you hadn't turned from your sins, I'm going to ask you to do that today. There's somebody say, Brother Lord, I'd like to become one of God's prized possessions. I want to be saved. Would you raise your hand this morning? Say, I'm not saved right now. I've got sin in my life, and I need to get free from that. Would you raise your hand? Anybody? Church, I hope you're praying with me. Would you raise your hand and say, I would like to be saved this morning. I want to get my heart right with the Lord. Is there anybody? The Lord wants to change your life, wants to save your soul. He gave his life for you. Church, I, I want you to pray just a little bit harder, if you would, and press on just a little bit more. I feel like somebody needed to have this explained a little bit. We're not saved. We're not a part of the church just because we come to church. Is there anybody want to be forgiven? Anyone? Well, could the church raise your hands and thank God again for the blood? Let's thank him for the blood. Thank him for the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Thank you. We're part of God's prized possession. Lord, I lift up your holy name. I thank you, dear God. Everyone that would come around this altar, if the devil's been telling you you can't make it, say, wait a second, God paid a great price for me. I'm a part of God's prized possession. I'm a part of God's property. He's going to defend me. He's going to protect me. He's going to take care of me. The devil cannot win. I'm going to go to heaven by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Could we all come and pray? Let's all seek the Lord here this morning.